Hello and welcome to Tuesday's Lunch Break Live, where I shall share simple, applicable tools to help you live your healthiest, happiest life. And today's topic is one thing you can do immediately to trick your brain, to help you succeed, and be more productive. I am Kim Klinkenbeard. I have helped thousands of people take back their health and reach their goals over the last 30 years with, through fitness and nutrition. And today I help women 40 and over transform their bonds and their bodies through my transformation programs. Today, we're going to do something a little bit different. I normally try to be super mindful of your time since it's lunch and just get right to it, but I do want you guys to interact with me a little bit more today. And in the comments, you can ask your questions and I will try to answer them if I can see them. But if you're watching, shoot me a hello. And I want to know if you have the fear of public speaking. If you have a fear of public speaking, top the word fear in the comments. Um, not that today's topic is about public speaking, but that is part of our example for today. So I want to know because I read that public speaking is the number one fear of most people. So I found that very interesting because it is not one of my fears. I'll tell you why a little bit later. But today we're gonna go ahead and focus on one trick that you can incorporate tonight immediately to help trick your brain into helping you succeed and make some changes. So our brains are constantly seeking to prove our core beliefs, whether those core beliefs are helpful to us or harmful to us. And what I mean by your core beliefs is what you believe about yourself. And that usually stems from your childhood, but not always. And so one example, again, we'll go back to the public speaking, is I had a client who, as an adult, she was fixing to have to public speak in public, give a speech for part of her job, and she was terrified. And we tracked this back to a time in her life in elementary school, which we can probably all relate, um, where something in elementary school, they had to get up in front of the class and talk about something. Well, she remembers this little boy tripping on his way up to the front of the class. So, of course, everyone laughs at him and makes fun of him. And then everything goes downhill from there. He stumbles through, forgets his deal. She just remembers it being this traumatic thing where he cried and everyone laughed and she was terrified. And, of course, when she had her turn to go up, she felt like she did terrible and everybody was making fun of her, too. Whether they were or not, she doesn't remember. So flash forward into adulthood where she has got to speak in public now. We worked on setting her up to succeed. And this is one thing you can do is, you know, get yourself in front of a group of people who love you, who are not going to make fun of you, right? And so that we're setting our brains up to see proof of success. And that's what we did for her. We had her note cards, we had her um, speech outlined where she knew exactly what she's gonna say. She practiced in front of loving family and friends who supported her and helped her through that and gave her brain proof. And now she's a fabulous public speaker um, and has gotten over that fear, but that's all stemmed from a core belief that was harmful for her. So um, if this is the case, if our brains are constantly seeking to prove our core beliefs, we first have to examine what those are if there's gonna be any significant or meaningful change happen for us. And so that is part of the first step in the transformation program that I teach. But today I'm gonna to teach you guys a trick and a way that you can trick your brain into seeing proof of success no matter what your core beliefs happen to be. A lot of us come into adulthood with a core belief that we are procrastinators. We put things off to the last minute. We thrive under pressure, okay? Because we have proven that we have actually pulled something off at the last minute and our brains are like, hey, you did that. But that is not necessarily true, nor is it helpful for us in long-term success, right? So we have got these core beliefs that we can actually trick our brains into forgetting that there was proof there and give it proof for something different so that we actually get a behavior modification towards success while we work on um, recognizing what the core beliefs are and then changing the ones that aren't helping us at all, right? Okay, so um, 
One way we can do that is to write our lists and our schedule. Now, hear me out really quickly. So our lists and our schedule, our bodies, every human, the whole entire universe is on a schedule. There are seasons, We there's a beginning, a middle, and an end. We have um, puberty and adulthood, there's seasons of life, plants are on a schedule, the earth is on a schedule, everything is on a schedule. So to say that you don't need a schedule or that you find it restrictive is going against human nature and it is not true. So get rid of that belief right away, right? We do need a schedule. We just need to be mindful of what that looks like and not be obsessive about it. And so here's one way that you can do that to help your productivity and give your brain the proof of success. And that is to make a list. Now, if you're having trouble being productive at work or you feel like you can be more productive throughout your day and work, there's one way to do that. I'm going to give you two options here. One is to take your work day and 15 minutes before your work day ends, let's say at five o'clock your work day's over and you go home. So at 445, you're going to take the last 15 minutes of your work day and you're going to start scheduling and making your list for the next morning. So what that's going to look like is cleaning up your desk and setting your desk up to succeed and to work your list that you make the night before, the end of the work day, for the morning. So it could look like at 8 a.m. I get to work, I'm going to um, look over all my emails and return emails for the first 30 minutes. And then at 8.30, I'm gonna start returning my phone calls and maybe at nine o'clock I have my meetings and the lunch and then after lunch, I'm gonna work on these three tasks. And if you'll set your workspace up to reflect that, you will be more likely to start marking things off your list. The key here though, is to also put a couple things on your list you absolutely know for sure you're going to do. And that could be make your list at the end of the day. You can add that to the bottom so that you can cross it off. You have to cross some things off your list to accomplish at least so many things a day, right? That gives your brain proof that it needs that those things can happen and that will completely change your life. The other way, if you're not at work day, because for me that is not really a system that works since I work from home and my work works. Oh, I'm back, sorry. And my work day is a little unconventional. Then I do my um, list the night before. So part of my bedtime routine is to make my to-do list for the next day. So that looks like um, I have my clients, so I'm going to get up. I'm going to set my clothes out the night before. I'm going to set my exercise equipment for my clients the night before. I will have made my workouts for the week, so I know what that looks like for each client. Um, and then I will have my, if I have a longer day, I'll have my water and my food or whatever I need to help me be successful set up the night before. And then my list for the next day, so I'll have, you know, emails when I get up and return that and then I've got clients and then I'll have my errands because I run errands in the middle of the day instead of after work because my work schedule is weird. So I will have those errands set up. Now I may have a long to-do list and you may as well and instead of carrying everything over because you never get anything marked off, that's a core belief, right? I can never get anything accomplished. I never finish any tasks. My to-do list just keeps getting longer and longer because I never finish. This is a way to change that core belief and help you succeed. Put things in your to-do list you know you're gonna do. Simple things, it seems ridiculous, but brush my teeth, I get to mark that off. Walk the dog, I get to mark that off. Clean up the dishes, I get to mark that off. Put some things on here you absolutely know you're going to do every single day that you can cross off that list. Make your bed. It doesn't have to be some massive task. So for instance, if you are going to, uh, if you have a core belief that you hate exercise, you're not gonna exercise, you don't have time to exercise, and therefore you're never gonna get in shape, you have proven to yourself time and time again that you don't exercise because you never quite mark that off your list for multiple days in a row. Now, 
if you will say, if you'll put exercise on your list, but you set it up in a way that you can accomplish it, that's gonna change your core belief. You will become an exerciser and you're giving your brain proof that you exercise. Hey, Barbara. Hey, Melanie. Okay, so here's what I mean by that. If you, if you put on your calendar, if you never exercise and you put on your calendar, you're gonna exercise every day of the week, you know that's not gonna happen. You've proven it for years. We're 49 years old. We've never consistently exercised every day of the week. Why would our brain think that we're gonna accomplish that? That's a core belief. It can't. So what we're gonna do instead is say, I'm gonna exercise for three minutes, four days a week. And you can do that. And here's what I mean by that. It doesn't have to be some hardcore jump rope for three minutes. It can be mindfully, intentionally moving your body will count towards exercise. So after I eat lunch, I'm gonna go up and down the stairs for three minutes on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Mark it off the list. That gives your brain proof that you exercise and that you mark it off the list. You have to mark stuff off your list or it does not register in the brain. It literally releases chemicals in the brain and changes the brain com uh, chemistry. So I'm gonna exercise three days a week for three minutes and that can be as simple as walking around the office, going up and down the stairs for three minutes and then marking that off the list and you have now become an exerciser because you were intentional about what that meant. You put it down on paper, you marked it off and your brain sought out proof either to prove it true or to disprove it, right? So if you can prove it true, you can change the, the brain, you can change the core belief and you can set yourself up for success. So your homework tonight is Figure out if you're going to make your to-do list on your schedule for the next day, the last 15 minutes at work, and set your work day up for success, your workspace, your to-do list in your schedule, and or you can come home and part of your bedtime routine is to make your to-do list and your, during your schedule for the next morning it gets all of those thoughts, the anxious, stressful thoughts, the, the things that you need to accomplish the next day out of your brain and on paper. So it reduces anxiety in the morning, it makes your mornings less chaotic and stressful. It reduces stress and anxiety at night because you're not laying in bed going through, oh my gosh, am I gonna forget to do this? Oh, I'm gonna forget to do that. I need to remember to do this. Oh, I need to do this tomorrow too. It gets all of that out of your mind so that you actually can sleep. So you reduce anxiety, you reduce stress, you improve your sleep, you reduce anxiety and stress and chaos in the morning. You prove to your brain that you can succeed and do fill in the blank because you're making some easy things on your list to mark off. Brush your teeth, make your bed, walk the dog, clean up the dishes, eat lunch, make that one. That's easy, we're all gonna do that one. So do that, mark it off the list and you're proving to your brain and it will change your life, I promise. So if you're going to do this or when you do, let's say it this way, when you try this tonight, I want you to come back to this video and put a green check mark in the comments and let me know. That will signal to me that you actually tried this tonight and let me know if, how your week goes from here and how you feel when you start marking several things off your list. Even if they're simple things you know you're gonna do anyway, mark them off the list. And if you forget and you're like, ah. Oh, I didn't mark anything off my list. Start adding stuff on there that you did. I brushed my teeth today, write it on there and mark it off. I made my list, write it on there and mark it off. So give yourself some things that you can mark off for sure or add them to it and mark it off. I promise this will significantly change your life. Um, and then I told you guys that I would tell you why I'm not afraid of public speaking. So y'all may or may not know this. Um, super duper shy as a little girl, very, very, very shy. My dad was very shy and he was worried I would be um, a shy child and it would uh, really harm me and you know my development and I wouldn't be uh, 
socially active or whatever, right? So my parents put me on stage. If it was something to be on stage for, they stuck me in it. Dance, piano, twirling, uh, hand bells, Bible drill. If it was on stage, they threw me up there. And so I grew up from the age of two or three until, well, now, I guess, on stage. And obviously that at least made me comfortable in front of people. So I have used that my whole entire life. That has helped me overcome my shyness in um, other social settings is, you know, I used all the skill and the knowledge that I learned growing up being on stage and applied that to my day-to-day -day as well. So if you have a shy child or you're shy, um, holler at me. I have some uh, recommendations on that. And if you are fearful of public speaking, uh, again, write fear in the comments and I will send you something. I will message you something and um, we, you can work on that too. So I know today was a little bit longer than normal, but I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it helpful. Try to make your to-do list today and give your brain some proof that you can succeed. Mark some things off your list. Be productive. You're not a procrastinator. You do get things done and that you are succeeding in life and see if that doesn't translate into your health and any other behaviors that you're trying to change. If you're interested in my mind and body transformation program for women, please uh, say uh, transformation in the comments and I will reach out to you and we will set up a call and see if this program is for you and if you're for this program. And if you are anybody else who is wanting some behavior and mindset work, I am putting together a master class. And if you're interested in that, comment mindset in the comments and I will make sure to put you on my list and I will get you that information on when that's gonna start. Talk to y'all later, guys. Thank you for watching. I love you and appreciate you. And I will see you next Tuesday at 1230. Bye.